We are back. Falcon franchise. Now the good news is, we more than likely can't do any worse than we did last week where we lost 41-10 to against the Washington football team. Whew, that was a bad game. But, gonna have to just leave that game behind and start over. We are currently the seventh seed. If the season ends today, which it, it won't, but if it did, we'd get our rematch. Luckily for us, Tampa Bay did lose, and we do currently have the advantage over Tampa Bay. So a win and a Tampa Bay loss will put us leading our division. But. We don't have any messages to talk about. We do have some negoti negotiating to consider. Alright, he does not want to resign for what I'm offering. I do want to bring Keith Smith back for a year. And after that, uh, I don't really think I want to bring anyone back. I don't think I'm bringing Drew Locke back. I want to see Chris Horn. You know, how he does. Don't think I'm bringing Tyrod back. Don't think I'm bringing anyone else back besides, uh, well, normally, besides Kendall Sheffield, Dante Fowler Jr., and maybe Chris Wormley. But, yeah. We are going to quickly make an adjustment to our lineup. I'm going to put Chris Horn in as starting quarterback. Drew Locke did not play particularly well. So, he got benched. Pretty early on in that game, as Kirk Cousins is their starting quarterback. Davin Cook, 99 overall. Harrison Smith and Daniil Hunter. Yeah. Do we have any injuries to note? None offensively. And none defensively. That's so our special teams. That's back to back weeks now. We haven't had an injury. That's good. We do have some upgrades. Jerry Mayfield, Drew Dahlman, Keandre Jones, John Hurst, Matt Hennessy. Some pretty decent people. And without further ado, I'm going to do this for once. We're going to actually look at the schedule. So, Steelers and Panthers play. And so do Bengals Saints. What time do we play? We get to play prime time. We're playing Sunday night. Do, is, I do not see the Buccaneers anywhere, which makes me think they are on a bye week. So let's just quickly go over to the Buccaneers then. Yeah, they are currently on their bye week. So this will put us, I believe, a game behind. Sunday Night Football, they're an 83 overall. We're an 80. So somewhat even. Both of us 
currently, you know, fighting for a playoff spot. We're six and six, holding the seven seeds, and they are five and seven. So, a win over us. If they win this game, it might put them in the playoffs. Carolina does defeat Pittsburgh, so that is not good for us. But at their own inside the one end zone. And they want to return and down at the 19. Great job by our special team team right there. As we see Kirk Cousins bring his offense out here. Having a pretty solid season. Not many touchdowns, but at the same time, very few interceptions. So, pretty solid ratio. As first and 10 from the 19. Dalvin Cook will get the carry. And there is a penalty, and Dalvin Cook gets to 21 yard line. And it's going to be holding on the offense on Irv Smith, number 84, the tight end. And electing to accept the penalty will now make it first and 20. They give it to Cook again. Cook takes it up to the third team for a gain of three. Second and 16 now. Sorry, I'm currently trying to remove some cat hair off my microphone diet. Somehow, somehow, someone keeps getting on here. That pass was incomplete. As he checks it down to Dalvin Cook for a gain of four. But that will bring up fourth down. And the punting unit punts it away, fielding it around the 37 and up to about the third nine is where this Falcons offense will start. Here's his career so far, Chris Horn. 17 for 22, two touchdowns, no interceptions. As they hand it off to Moser, who takes it up to the 46 for a gain of seven. Second and three now. From the 46. Quick pass is complete to Calvin Ridley. He's going to take it across midfield up to the 45 for nine yards and a first down. First and 10 now from the 45. As the Saints beat the Bengals 24 to 21. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. That pass is going to be complete to Russell Gage. Who's, well, not Ru Russell Gage. Uh, Marcos out of Scantling, who takes it up to 36-yard line for a gain of nine. Second and one now. Pass is complete to Kyle Pitts up to 26 for a gain of 10 and a first down. First and 10 from 26 now. Play action. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. And that pass is going to be complete down to the free yard line for a gain of 23 and a first down. First and goal now. Catch up by the, uh, Marquez out of scaling. Uh, hand off to the fullback, Keith Smith, who just got a contract extension. He fumbles the ball. And that's going to be picked up by the, the Vikings. Just got the one-year contract extension. As Washington beats the, the Bears 2017, Dalvin Cook gets a carry, and he's going to take it up to the 24-yard line. They started at the 20 because it was recovered in the end zone. It's just a touchback. Second and six now. And off to Cook again. He's going to take it up to the 27 for a gain of three, making it third and three. Burn free now. 
Kirk Cousins looking to throw. And then Grady Jarrett with the sack. That's going to be a loss of four. Making it fourth and seven. And uh, Vikings punting units out there now. Grady Jarrett with his ninth sack of the season. Feeling in that ball right around the 26 yard line. Up to 27 is where the Falcons will get the ball. Chris Warren had an amazing first drive, but Keith Smith fumbled the ball just short of the goal line. As there's a the carry to Mostert, who's going to take it up to the 30 for a gain of three. Making it second and seven. Under two minutes left to go in the first quarter. Eric Kendricks on the tackle, it appears. Second and seven, Chris Warren's going to look to throw. That's complete to Raheem Moser, who's going to take it up to the 45 for a gain of 15 and a first down. Raheem Mostert is finally finding himself, it appears. Not very good running back, but as a receiving back, might have to try and give him a, a contract maybe and sign him in at receiver. Is that pass going to be, or that's not a pass, that's a rush by Cordero Patterson for a gain of four. Second and six now. This one's going to look to throw. Down to the 46 across midfield. And shorted the first down by a yard. That brings up third down. That was Alameda Zacchaeus on the, the catch. Third and one. They give it to Mostert. And Mostert's going to break a tackle. And he's going to keep going. And he's going to be down around the uh, 34 yard line. But there is a penalty. But either way, it's going to be a first down. Because it is a five yard penalty from where to foul occurred which would have been across the first down even with the five yard back is there's a carry from Moser Moser breaks it big and takes it up to 29 for a gain of a, I don't know how much but a first down and that is going to be the end of quarter number one currently tied at zero apiece Chris Warren completes his pass that is Alameda Zacchaeus Taking it up to the 18 yard line for a first down. First and 10 now from the 18 yard line. Hand off. Raheem Oster's going to break a tackle and he's going to take it up to the 12 yard line for a gain of six and I'll bring up second and four. Second and four from the 12 yard line. Raheem Oster gets the carry again. He's going to take it up to the 8 yard line where it's going to be gain of four but it's going to be third and inches and they give it back to Moster and right there to stop it is number 94 for the that's Dalvin Tomlinson and now is a loss of two four from three the Falcons are going to elect to go for it here and it looks like it's going to be a run play and it's a fullback dive to Keith Smith and he gets the first down he doesn't fumble that time Way to trust him even after the fumble. First and goal now from the seven. A fake end around. It's going to be a handoff to Moser, who's going to take it up to the four yard line for second and goal. That was a gain of three. Five minutes left to go now in the half. A fullback dive to Keith Smith, who's going to get to the three yard line for a gain of one. That brings up third and goal. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. And that pass is complete to Mark Lajada's handling him. Fights his way into the end zone for the touchdown. It seems like Chris Horn's established a favorite target this game already. And the extra point is good, making this score 7 to nothing. been targeting Marquez Valdez Scantling early on in the game and a huge hit but Let's go. Ooh. defender had the man stopped pretty far back but got trucked over and they're gonna start at 21 and off the cook cook's gonna fight ahead to the 27 for a gain of six for the most part has been held somewhat in check. Forced them to throw the ball a bit more. 
A man in motion, fake end around, and it's going to be a carry to Cook, and Cook's going to find a hole. He's going to take it up to the 37 for a gain of 10 and a first down. Let's go, As the Green Bay Packers lose their game, which gives Washington the one seed because they did win their game. First and 10 from the 37 now, a handoff to Cook, and a wide open hole. Jukin, he's going to take it up to midfield for a gain of about 12 to 13 and a first down. First and 10 now from midfield. Hand off right back to Cook and it's going to be outside. And he's going to take it up to the 45 for a gain of 5. You're going to say 44. Well, a gain of 6. Second and 4 now. That's the 2 minute warning is approaching. Another handoff to Cook. And he's going to take it outside to the 38. No, that was Alexander Madison. Excuse me. That was a gain of 6 and a first down. And a 2 minute warning. The Vikings are finding their rhythm now. They have not thrown the ball once this drive, I believe. Will this be their first? And it will be. And that pass is going to be complete. That is Dalvin Cook up to the 25th. First and 10 now from the 26. Clock running, just over a minute and a half to go. And down he goes, John Kaminsky with the pressure. For a loss of nine. Second and 19. And that pass is incomplete. Dropped on the play. As third and 19 with 59 seconds left to go at the 34 yard line. Kirk Cousins is going to look to throw. And nowhere to go. Jalen Phillips on the sack down at the 47. And the Falcons are electing not to call a timeout here. As the punting unit's out there, it's going to be punted away. And that's going to go into the end zone with 15 seconds left to go. The Falcons have all three timeouts, so who knows if we see a, a potential drive. And we're going to see a handoff. That's going to go up to 26 for a gain of six. And they'll elect not to use their timeout, so that will take us into halftime. With the halftime score being 7 to nothing, Falcons. There's the first half stats for those of you who are interested. And now, a look around the league. Starting off, we head down to Pittsburgh at Carolina. The Panthers came away with the win 24 to 10. Sam Darnold for touchdown pass. Christian McCaffrey for rushing touchdown. Terrence Marshall had a pretty solid game. Next, we head to Buffalo Green Bay. 31 to 13 was the final score. Josh Allen with a pair of touchdowns, one to Stephon Diggs, and a rushing touchdown by Devin Singletary. And here's a, a big look from games around the league. The highlighted one, so the most interesting people assume, Ravens at Baltimore, which will be tomorrow night. For those of you who are interested in watching. Here's the Falcons when it comes down to running the ball inside this game. And here's the Minnesota Vikings when it comes down to them running the ball inside this, this game. So both teams coming into this game had a similar game plan, but they both pulled it off pretty well so far. But when it's come down to the passing attack, that's where Atlanta Falcons have ultimately separated. Fielded at the one-yard line, but not a good return up to the 17 is where the Atlanta Falcons will start. The first drive of the half. This is half number two, I should say. First and 10 from the 17. Chris Warren is going to look to throw. That pass is going to be complete. Marquez Valdez scaling up to the 33 for a first down. But Minnesota is going to challenge it. Maybe they saw something. Maybe he didn't have possession or was out of bounds. From that angle, it looks like that is a clear catch. You cannot really tell if the left foot is in bounds or not. But from the angle, but... 
ultimately, if that's the case, they have to go with the call that, you know, they made at the beginning. And ultimately, they will rule it a catch. There's not conclusive evidence. They must remain with the call they had. As Chris Horn is going to go down and fumble the ball. But lucky we picked the ball back up as one of the offensive linemen. A loss of 16 on the play. Chris Horn has not thrown an incompletion yet. And I was about to say hasn't been sacked at all, but that went away quickly. There is his first incompletion, avoiding the sack. Now, third and 26, we may just see a run here to hopefully give him better field position. No, we will not. Falcons are going aggressive. Chris Horn, incomplete. Now, bring up fourth and 26 from the 17-yard line. So, where they started is ultimately where it will end. Punting is out there. Punt is away. It's going to be fielded at the... 37 and ultimately that will be where go, they go. stop Here we go. here's Kirk Cousins hoping to give a drive that will hopefully have points on the board has been sacked decent amount of time so far I believe three one by John Kaminsky one by Jalen Phillips and one by Grady Jarrett so a quick montage of those Vikings are only down 7 to nothing, so they can easily turn the tide. A good juke move by Dalvin Cook will take him up to the 45. Kirk Cousins barely got that ball away. Jalen Phillips was about to get to him. For a gain of 8, though. Second and 2. Hand off up the middle to Dalvin Cook. He's going to get free on the play, but it'll be enough for a first down. As a handoff to Cook is going to break big. He's going to make a juke move and he's going to get pushed forward to the 44 yard line for a game of eight and a half. And Noah Igmanogane gets injured. So that's going to bring in the backup safety. As finding another hole is Dalvin Cook taking it up to the 39. It's going to be enough for a first down. Cook averaging over six yards a carry at the moment. Fabian Moreau on the tackle. Wait, no. I don't know who was on the tackle, apparently. Actually. Another big hole by Cook. Down at the 27. Now averaging at nearly 7 yards per carry after that. And has his X Factor activated, and that is enough for a first down. First and 10 from the 27. Hand off to Cook. Gonna bounce it. He's gonna juke back inside. Down at the 15 for a gain of 12 and another first down. First and 10, Kirk Cousins going to look a throw. Firing. Incomplete. Threw it away. That brings up second and 10 now. With 4-10 left in the third quarter. Hand off to Dalvin Cook. Going to be taken to the 11. Where it's going to be third and 7. Third and 7. Kirk Cousins looks to throw. Pressure off the edge, but he's going to throw towards the end zone. And that pass is going to be incomplete. I think it was intended for Adam Phelan or Justin Jefferson. As the field goal is good. A score of 7-3 to three now. With 3.31 left to go in the third quarter. That kick is going to be fielded around two years. Uh, two yards in the end zone. Trucking over a person but being ultimately tackled at the 20. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Cordero Patterson. And that is where the Falcons will start their next drive. Falcons currently have momentum. First and 10. Hand off to Moser who's going to take it up to the 22 or gain a 2 in second and 8. Under three minutes left to go now in the third quarter. Hand off to Mostert, who's going to break his way through, and he's going to still be trucking forward for a gain of nine up to 31. That's enough for a first down. 
great hustle on the play by Mostert. First and ten, Chris Horn. No throw, completes a quarter Patterson. At the third seven for a gain of six. Gain no of second and four. The 37. Under two minutes left to go now in the third quarter. This one's going to look to throw and unblocked is Michael Pierce. And that's going to be third and ten now after a loss of six. Chris Warren's going to look to throw on third and ten. He's going deep. And incomplete intended for Marquez out of scaling. Harrison Smith on the coverage. And I'll bring up 4th and 10. And the field goal unit, or not the field goal unit, the punting unit is out there. And that ball is away. And that's going to be fielded around the 26. No fair catch. And that will ultimately be at the 30 yard line. Which is where the Vikings will start their next drive. Hoping to potentially take the lead. The lead, the lead. But Grady Jarrett says no. Another sack, his second of the day, loss of 10. Second and 20 now from this 20. They give it to Cook. And Cook manages to get a yard. They're not even going to say he got a yard. It's going to be more like half a yard. It's third and 20. Kirk Cousins looks to throw. Just going to check it down to Cook, who's going to be down at the 23, and that's going to be a gain of about two. And that will do it for three quarters. We have one left. There's the stats for those of you who are curious. The Vikings averaging up average passing of negative eight due to the amount of sacks they've had. That's four from 18. Punting units out there. And that kicks away. The deep one, around the 27, going to break a tackle, and he's going to ultimately be out at the 31. And that is where the Falcons will get the ball, hoping to put some more points on the board, make it a two-possession game, or to just extend their lead. That pass is complete, down to the 36 for a gain of five. Marquez out of Scantling. Who's been quiet relatively most of the year until the start of last week where it's stepping out of bounds. So that's going to be a loss of one. Where Chris Horn stepped in and he kind of made his presence somewhat known. But now he's really stepped it up. It just seems they have that chemistry. Burn six now from the 35. Overthrows Kyle Pitts. And that is going to bring up fourth down. With 6.49 left to go. Presley Harvin's out there to punt the ball. The Vikings will get the ball back with a chance to get the lead. Feeling that ball around at 18. And down at the 24. Keen to Wangu. And that is where the Minnesota Vikings will start. 24 yard line. They hand it off to Cook, who fights his way up to the 25 for a gain of one. John Kaminsky on the tackle there. Falcons not very good when it comes down to points allowed. Which usually signifies they have some high scoring games, apparently, because of a 6-6 six six record. But they've, they've held the Vikings to three points today, but at the same time, the Vikings have held them to seven. Third and nine. Feeling pressure, he's going to throw the ball away to Irv Smith, but freaking mi missed him. Four for nine, the punting unit's out there with 539. Falcons will get the ball back to hopefully, you know, get out of here for a win. Got the ball at the 25 and is going to be down at the 26. First and ten. Chris Horn's going to scramble out. Going to throw it to Ben Jenkins, who takes it to 27 for a gain of about one and a half. Which will bring up second and nine. Second and nine. Chris Horn feels pressure, and Daniel Hunter's going to take him down. Down at the 17. 
for a loss of 10. Bird in 19 now. Bird in 19 from 17. Chris Horn's going to look to throw. Going to throw. That pass is going to be complete. As Marcos Valdez scaling up to 25, 4 from 11. The punting units out there. That's going to be at the 37. In old, well, the 33, I meant. Let's go, let's do this. Well, the 32, I meant. And he'll be down at the 33. So a gain of one. Kirk Cousins hopes to lead a uh, go-ahead drive. They give it to Davin Cook. Maybe Kirk Cousins doesn't need to. Davin Cook keeps playing the way he is. Gain a seven on the play. Second and three from the 40. Davin Cook is two yards away from 100 on the game. And I'll give it right back to Cook. Who's going to take it to the 44. And that is going to be enough for both the first down. And 100 rushing yards. But... On the play, Foyase de Lukun does get injured, which does stop the clock. Minnesota is also down a timeout because I believe they did challenge a play earlier this half, and it was wrong. As a gain of one there, making it second and nine. And the 45. They give it to Davin Cook. He's going to take it up across midfield to the 49. That's going to bring up third and three. Under three minutes left to go. Cook in the backfield. Kirk Cousins shotgun. It's going to be a pass. Cousins going to scramble out. Dante Fowler Jr. is going to get to him. But down at the 40. That's going to be enough for nine and a first down. The Vikings do not need to call another play before two minute warning. But it looks like they might. And they will. Kirk Cousins is going to look to throw. That pass is going to be intercepted. That's Fabian Moreau, who had the breakout season last season. Produced a total of, of I believe, eight interceptions. Chris Horn's going to look to throw, and he's going to sling it deep. He has a man wide open, and that's Mark Lesvada scaling, and that's going to be a touchdown. 73 yards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, may be the dagger 14 to 3 now with a minute 58 left to go Vikings with only two timeouts they're going to need to score fast probably rely on an onside kick down it to 19 go, is boys. where go. they will come out to hopefully at least make this game seem doable who knows they could potentially pull it off as well. Kirk Cousins going to look to throw. Boyase de Lukun, who got injured earlier in the game, comes back. And him and Dante Fowler Jr. combined for the sack. Down at the 9. That was a loss of 10. And that brings up 2nd and 20. Check down to Justin Jefferson. who's going to be down at the 16. Gain of 7. Timeout Vikings. Justin Jefferson's first catch of the game. They've held him in check. Go indeed. John Kaminsky almost got him there. And that pass is going to be incomplete. AJ Terrell in the coverage. Tended for Justin Jefferson. As 4 from 13. Game on the line. Kirk Cousins going to look to throw. And that pass is going to be intercepted by AJ Terrell. At the 46. Adam Phelan on the tackle. And that is going to do it. The Falcons can kneel the clock out now. AJ Terrell with that gets his sixth interception on the season. Timeout Vikings, but ultimately will not do anything as the Falcons can just need a ball. That will take us to the end of the game. One more kneel down should do it.
And a punt from Presley Harvin, I guess, just to pad the stats. That will go out at the 19-yard line. And that is going to do it. Looking at the stats now. Chris Horn, 15 for 19, 195, two touchdowns and interceptions. Kirk Cousins, 5 for 13, 33 yards. No touchdowns, two interceptions. Rushing, Dalvin Cook was 20 for 109, 5.4 average. Remo Mostert, 10 for 53, 5.3 average. Keith Smith was 3 for 7, 2.3 average. Chris Horn, 3 for negative 3, negative 1 average. Alexander Madison, 1 for 6, 6.0 average. Cordell Patterson, 1 for 4, 4.0 average. And Kirk Cousins, 1 for 9, 9.0 average. Receiving, Marquez Valdez Campbell was 7 for 137 and 2 touchdowns. Dalvin Cook was 4 for 26. Juan Zacchaeus, 2 for 18. Cordell Patterson was 2 for 5. Calvin Ruby, 1 for 9. Justin Jefferson, 1 for 7. Ben Jenkins, 1 for 1. Kyle Pitts, 1 for 10. Raheem Moser, 1 for 15. Blocking. Garrett Bradbury allowed two sacks. One sack allowed by Christian Darisaw, Ezra Cleveland, Justin Murray, Chris Lindstrom, James Mayfield, and Brian O'Neill. Defensively, two sacks for Grady Jarrett. One for Michael Pierce, Jalen Phillips, Daniel Hunter, Dalvin Tomlinson, and John Comiskey. Half a sack for Dante Fowler Jr. and Foyce Adelukun. Interceptions, one for A.J. Terrell and one for Fabian Moreau. Kicking, both sides were perfect for field goals and extra points. And punting, Matt Hack, Hawk, I don't know. 5 for 239, 47.8 average. And Presley Harvin, 5 for 206, 41.2 average. Kick returning, Keen Nwangu, 3 for 58, 19.3 average. And Cordero Patterson, 2 for 38, 19.0 average. Punt return, Keen Nwangu, 4 for... 4 for 8, 2.0 average. Cordero Patterson, 4 for 2, 0.5 average. As the Falcons come away with the victory, 14 to 3 was our final. As we do have an injury. No Igmanogane is going to be out five weeks. As we advance to next week. So he should be out four weeks now if I'm not mistaken. As the Seahawks are currently eight and five. So that should be a close matchup and meet a lot for playoffs. As Tampa Bay moves up to the free seed after another bye. Seattle should be a tough game. As Noah Igmanogane is out for four weeks now. Which means he will be back in time for the playoffs. He'll miss week 15 through 18. And he'll be back for the wild card. As I do not think we can win the division. At, or the, the one seed at this point. I think Washington already has it confirmed over us. So at best we can get the two seed. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.